So thank you. Um, there is a ultra marathon in South Africa between two cities, Durban and Peter Maritburg, which is about 100 kilometers long. And in the last 10 kilometers, people start falling like flies, holding their legs, falling over, not making it. So we're in the conference equivalent of the last 10 kilometers. So well done for making it this far. I'll try and make it quick and um, fairly perky. Um, there are just two components to the presentation. The one is, um, what is the GIB, uh, what does it do? And by the way, we're great. The second part of the con uh, uh, presentation is about energy efficiency and our approach to energy efficiency funding. So a little bit of an introduction. We are an organization which, although we're called a bank, we're not actually a bank. We don't have a banking license. We operate like a fund. We're 100% owned by government, and we, had a, we have a large amount of um, funding to apply to projects that deliver a commercial return in certain areas of green funding. We are completely independent. We've got a number of specialist investors in those areas, and we have an independent investment committee and independent board chaired by the same person who ran the Smith Commission called Robert Smith. Um, two components to our business. Um, in terms of investment, we have to be green. Everything we do has strict parameters in terms of delivering low carbon, efficiency, biodiversity, sustainability, and so forth. But we also have to be profitable. We are not like some of the under other funding mechanisms out there that offer um, donor soft funding or even interest-free funding. We have to be commercial, so we lend on a commercial basis the same way that another bank might lend. And there are three areas that we invest in, or three children of the GIB. I'm a third child, and my mother always told me I'm the most difficult. And of those three, energy efficiency clearly is the most difficult, most fragmented. And I'll go into some of the reasons why it's such a struggle to invest in the energy efficiency market. So I'm not going to go through all of the things we've achieved. This is the we are great part of it. We've actually deployed quite a lot of capital in a number of projects all around the country, right from really, really large offshore wind projects we invested in the first project that had six megawatt turbines, and with the blades, these things are absolutely enormous. If you think of two rugby fields on top of each other, and you bring them up vertically, that's about the height of the top of one of these rotor blades. They're absolutely enormous, and it's the first, type, first time that this Siemens six megawatt um, uh, turbine technology is going to be used. The next stage of that is the eight megawatt turbine, even bigger turbines that we're investing in in a, um, uh, a, a second wind farm that's just decided to use the Vestas eight megawatt turbine. We have partners both on the um, uh, logistics side, on the funding side. Uh, um, we work with all sorts of international investors. We um, have funds that we invest in, and there are lots of market names here that you'll be familiar with. We are in the areas, and I'm not including energy efficiency here, um, the most active investors in both the offshore wind and the waste to energy market, and we hope to be one of the most active investors in the energy efficiency market. Um, and those figures you see there, 43% market share, 56% market, market share, is not actual um, money out the door. It's the projects that we have been involved in um, uh, in total in aggregate are 50% of the projects. So we ha are one of the funders in those, uh, in, in those projects. So we are very, very active, and we do know the markets we invest in very well. Um, again, I'm not going to go into this in into too much detail, just to show that we have invested all over the place. We've invested um, in uh, uh, whiskey distillery, CHP biomass, all the way down to very small lighting projects all around the country in, in, in car parks, and then the obvious ones, the big energy from waste and offshore wind um, uh, projects. So energy efficiency. You know, there's these figures thrown around that the energy efficiency market has billions of um, of pounds of potential, but energy efficiency itself is not a market. It's not a single market. You invest in one thing or invest in one asset. It's, a, it's, a, it, it's really just um, uh, something that you bundle together ideas for energy savings. So it's a concept more than a market, and in order to invest in it, you've got to decide how these small interventions can be aggregated up in some way that makes sense for a large infrastructure funder. So you'll know all these figures. We can uh, reduce our energy bills by up to 15%, the enormous amounts of um, money that can be saved, the enormous amounts of sales that can be realized in funding of these in in interventions, and it's um, uh, cost-effective to do so. So 
these are the things that um, uh, that you know where it takes place both public sector pri pri private sector and then the delivery mechanisms are through energy service companies and um, supported by financiers so we work in all of these areas but the biggest challenge we've got is how do you get projects that are generally very very small in size to be funded in a basis that large funders like ourselves or other big commercial banks can join together and make sense of and you do it in one of two ways you have to aggregate and that's the common thing and you either aggregate through having a common investment proposition a common set of contracts a standardized um, uh, in investment process or you do it on the basis you have partnerships with people that are aggregating these projects and you can either do that through a smaller fund or you can do it through an ESCO who is doing it across a, a technology or a, a, a set of hosts. So there the aggregation vehicle would be a sector, the retail sector or a big retailer or through an ESCO that's looking in lighting and the aggregation would be um, uh, through a particular technology like LED lights. So how can we fund? We fund in the way that we see it's most appropriate, and in some cases it makes it more appropriate to invest, to, to, to lend um, directly. And in the case of lighting, where you've got a mature technology, where you know what the savings are gonna be, the bulbs themselves are sold on the basis that they'll draw a certain amount of energy, there with a advanced technology where you can get guarantees from the performance of it, it makes sense to lend directly to a local authority in this case because you can lend more cheaply on that basis and you've got a simple proposition where we've talked about some pl complications where a public sector entity can't borrow or you've got a collection of things that are happening it could be lighting combined heat and power um, boilers heating things that are more complex where there's some uncertainty uh, uh, around it and you need these um, uh, installed in uh, uh, through a common standard or you need to do it on a savings savings basis for accounting reasons we can do that on an off balance sheet basis and then from a for those who are familiar with um, the, the style of investment we can lend directly to a company or we can lend to an entity owned by a company so what we're talking about here is on balance sheet or off balance sheet where the ESCO is doing it on an energy savings basis and they're creating a special funding vehicle that is not um, uh, uh, using the company or the local authority's credit to back up the repayments of, um, of that funding or the return that's being um, generated by that funding. So very, very briefly, um, a case study. We looked at the street lighting market and we said, what's, um, what's the gap? Obviously a huge market. Most of the street lights um, in, in, in the UK are owned by local authorities, say for in, in Northern Ireland. Um, there's enormous amount of opportunity. Nobody really knows exactly what the total energy usage is across the country because lights aren't metered light by light. There's usually deemed um, uh, usage. But the total um, energy usage in local authorities across the UK is probably around 350 million. Uh, it's above 300 million. And the savings given the new technology could be in excess of 200 million a year. So we, we looked at that and said, what, is the, what does the market need here? It's a mature technology, it's well understood, the savings are known and they can be guaranteed by the manufacturers. It's not complex to, um, to install. So what does a local authority need? Local authority needs the ability to be able to install these things knowing that it's not going to have an effect on the, um, uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the revenue and can be funded over time by the savings made. So if you're making a certain amount of savings in year one based on the savings in energy and in, to a lesser extent in uh, carbon costs and maintenance costs, you know because energy inflation that those um, savings are gonna increase every year in nominal terms and they'll increase, increase according to the energy savings. So why not structure the lending to a local authority in a way that is based on repayments that match the energy savings and in that way you can make sure that the installation of something that is um, an energy savings piece of technology is done on the basis of spend to save or you, 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 you spending but the repayments are no more than the amount you're actually saving but because you're lending directly to a local authority and because local authorities in the UK have a large amount of funding from central government they are pretty creditworthy, and you can lend at fairly low rates. So we're not the 
we're not the only institution that lends um, lends in this market and, and authorities have a number of other opportunities and they should be using um, the facilities of the likes of Salix for that por portion of the um, of the lighting that fits into uh, into their requirements because that will be part of the funding solution but we're providing something else that can allow them to invest in the whole estate and make sure that they can do it on a spend to save basis so i'm going to leave it there thank you um, very much for your welcome to ask me questions after <laughs>